Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in the Palo Alto studios having a CUBE conversation. You know, we go out to all the events, we talk to a lot of executives and engineers and developers, et cetera. But what we really like to do when the opportunity is here is talk to practitioners, people that are actually implementing the technology, putting it in play, trying to get a competitive advantage. And we're really excited to have uh, our next guest. He's Stephen McKay. He is the Senior Director, End User Services and Support at the Lending Club. Stephen, great to see you. Thank you. So for people that aren't familiar with the Lending Club, give us kind of the uh, the basic overview. Sure, we've got sort of two halves of the business. One is perhaps you'd like a loan, restructure your debt, or um, do some life changes like a wedding or something like that, so you could come to us for a personal loan. The other half of our business is for um, people who have money that they wish to invest in a different kind of vehicle, and so they invest in other people's debt, and it gives them a steady uh, cash flow, because when the loans get paid back, they get paid. Um, and so we provide a marketplace for those two halves to meet. So that's really what makes you different, because clearly there's lots of places that people can go get a loan, but I've never heard kind of that second half of the equation. Yeah. Um, so what percentage of your capital comes from people participating on the supply side? So almost our, well, all of our debt is designed to be sold on the marketplace. Oh, it is, We okay. invest almost, well, we invest a little bit of money, just um, mainly as a float, but almost everything is, um, for our investor. That's so cool, and is it done as in, in, in like a fund, or how, how's it kind of structured, or you're kind of buying into a portfolio? So when, of, you, of when you go loans? onto our platform, you go in and you can see um, the type of customer that you wish to invest in. Certain FICO score, certain geography, certain you know background in jobs, the reason why they're loan, um, wanting a loan. And then you select some loans individually, but you're not buying the entire loan. Let's say someone wants $5,000. You're going to invest $25, $50 in that person, and you're going to find 100 people like that to invest your money. So that way, you know, if someone does default, that does happen. Um, you're not out your entire amount. Right, right. Yeah. And does the transaction happen on demand, or I, I put in whatever my amount is I want to put in your platform, I put my profile in, and then you basically parse it out as, yeah, so as those customers come in. Basically what's, what's happening is, is when you go on the platform, you're seeing people that have already applied, and we have um, basically approved, and you are funding their loan. So you have a few days to decide if you're going to, which loans you're going to fund before they disappear because we are going to have to give the people the right. money. How yeah. cool, and how can you share the scale of, of Kind of the size of your operation, or I don't know what's public or private. Um, Obviously, you don't say anything. So we, you're not we to say. are, yeah. We're, so we we actually are the nation's largest personal loan lender in this market space. Wow. So yeah, several billion dollars a year. Very cool. So presumably, you have an advantage because you're a modern company. You're looking at you know different types of data, more data, cutting it different ways than maybe a traditional bank that's just using your FICO score or some of the exactly. kind of more traditional scoring methods. Exactly. So big data and data in general tremendous piece of your guys' core business. Mm -hmm. and yep. So what are some of the things, maybe I don't know if you could share that, that you look at that maybe people would never think that's a valuable, you know, yeah. not the whole portfolio, but are there some I can't get into I can't get into too much details because it is, it is somewhat, you know, it's your secret um, sauce. Yeah, it's a yeah. secret sauce. Don't tell me any secrets. Details. <laughs> um, you know, but, but we, do, um, we do use a wide variety of the traditional sorts of things, you know, that people are familiar with, but we, we look at things um, that are a little bit outside the box too. Yeah. You know, that have a lot more to do with um, who you are as a person and um, the type of you know credit that you've had in the past and things like that. Very cool. All right, and then what are, what do you do? Um, obviously, read your title, but what what do yeah. you uh, what do you keep busy with all day long? Yeah, so I keep besides coming to visit us here in Palo Alto. Yeah, um, I keep busy with um, making our internal employees happy. So I'm very f I'm on the corporate technology side of um, Lending Club and I make sure that our employees have the tools um, that they need to be able to do their jobs on a daily basis. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm running uh, back-end infrastructure or things like our email services and stuff like that, but also just the day-to-day -day grind of laptops and desktops. Right, right, keeping, keeping the lights on, so classic yeah. kind of IT. Mm -hmm. So you're here on behalf of Cohesity. Um, so where does Cohesity play in your world yeah. um, now? And then we'll get into it a little bit deeper as to why and how. Sure. So. Um, uh, Cohesity is basically our new backup platform. Um, we uh, we were a very traditional backup environment, standard you know software, um, backend uh, virtual disk system, um, very you know very traditional type shop. Um, honestly, I've been in IT for over 20 years, and I put in a system like this one of my first gigs as a consultant over 20 years ago. Right. Um, so. 
you know, it was time to look outside the box and maybe shake things up a little bit and look at something that's been, you know, developed in the last decade. Right. Um, and uh, so that's that's how we kind of uh, landed at uh, at Cohesive. So what appealed to you? What uh, what were the kind of top two or three things you were looking looking for? Well, our, our our huge our biggest challenge was you know I mean back in when I started in IT I was backing up four gig hard drives and four gigs was awesome you know um, and now my four my, gigs. my phone is uh, four terabytes four gigs yeah and my you know <laughs> and now my phone is is bigger than four gigs a lot a lot than bigger four than four gigs, gigs. <laughs> and and that back up system couldn't back up my phone and so you know we have terabyte uh, file systems and things and with the traditional backup system that was if it was successful it took days right you know, four days or so to actually do a backup and so um, that that's not tenable um, and so you know going to something that rather than you know copying every file every single time um, does it on a block level and um, is a little more integrated directly into our virtualization layer right. was the right way to go. Well, and I love how you said before we turn on the cameras that when you make a decision to replace something, you try very, very hard to actually replace something and not just add something new. Yeah, so I drive my staff a little nuts because they know that when they come to me and say, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna do this new exciting thing and we're gonna, we're gonna stop doing this over here, I'm like, you're gonna stop. That means I'm gonna walk in the data center and flip that thing <laughs> off, right? Off. And they're like, well, but there's that old stuff. I'm like, yeah, well, we gotta get the old stuff out. And so that was really one of the competitive advantages that Cohesity had for us is because they're not uh, just a, a, a backup appliance or whatnot. They do have a file system in there. We could basically replicate all our old backup jobs into um, the Cohesity. Um, and that way, we uh, we have to keep the software around. You know, and we've been able to restore an old job. If we had reason to do so, we'd be able to. But at least we can go into the data center and shut that old device right. off. So. so, were there any particular features that jumped out at the top of the list that, or, or was it just you know you're looking for really modern architecture with a whole bunch of features? Yeah, it was. It's really it's a very modern architecture. Um, it has some great capabilities to move data into the cloud and into AWS space um, to actually use the sort of same technology and the same policies to backup devices in the cloud that you would use um, on-prem. And so, you know, it has a lot of great features, um, but to us, really, the competitive differentiator was that file system. Okay. Being able to move um, our old backups directly into the system and be able to use our old backup software. We didn't have to do, you know, restore and re-backup or anything crazy like that. Right, so. so all your peers are all probably wondering how hard was it? Um, you know, what was kind of the scope of the effort? What was the scope of, of moving the old stuff over? Well, so. Would you, um, what would you tell to somebody making, you know, considering this uh, this move? Have a good partner. I hired our integrator to do the actual migration. And um, one of the reasons I chose the integrator I chose is because they were willing to bid on this, um, knowing that what they really were going to do is dial into my system for four hours a week for a very long period of time and just scheduling backup jobs to keep the engine humming. And there wasn't a lot of like sit there, and there was no value at having one of my people sit there and watch stuff because it's just backup restores. It's right. not right. rocket science, but it does take a little bit of, of hand holding. So I, I outsourced the actual migration of all the jobs. Um, the actual setting up of Cohesity is like, you know, a couple of hours. It, it's once it's racked, it's, you know, actually setting it up and the migration of, you know, turning that on, making it active, doing some test restores, you know, doing some test backups, test restores of systems, and then just, you know, opening the floodgates. That that was relatively simple. And and you mentioned that one of the things that appealed to you was an integration to public cloud environments beyond just the on-prem. Mm -hmm. Are you using that? And if so, how are you divvying up? Um, yeah, so what goes where? Yeah. So we, most of our um, most of our services are on-prem or cloud services. Um, you know, no infrastructure, we're just, you know, the sales forces, that work days, those sorts of services. And so, we don't have a ton of stuff in AWS space on the corporate side. My, my peers in the, the product side would be a very different answer there. But, um, but what we're doing is, is we're doing migrations so that we can do our DR in the cloud. Um, so that we can keep stuff on-prem, but if we needed, you know, if we had a problem on-prem, um, we can we can do DR, and we we're also doing replications between our our colos, but um, 
but that's our primary use case. Is to get, is to get yeah. it off, so it's cool. So do you consider yeah. that kind of secondary storage, or it's really more just pure pure backup there if you had a, if you yeah, had a problem? Yeah, so, I mean, so we, we are looking um, for secondary storage and things, you know, our file servers and things like that. Um, we've had such good performance with the backup migration, um, and um, so we're looking at, at getting off of our file server so we don't even have to back it up, so it's just uh, native objects inside. So, I'm just curious in terms of kind of the data growth that you have to deal with um, on a day-to-day -day basis, your data growth in terms of the IT shop is probably, your explosive stuff's probably happening more, I would imagine, on the, the well, core product, or well, you're we smiling actually, and making yeah, a funny so face. I, I, it was something I must we didn't be, uh, talk about earlier. <laughs> so one of the things that was very interesting to we we put in the Cohesity system, and we sized it all out, and based on our you know data volumes and things like that, but what we didn't realize is that, that we had a system that is a part of our statistical analysis for our loan modeling, okay? And um, what we didn't understand is we couldn't back that up. It, it was too large and we couldn't back it up with our old backup system. Um, and what the, the, guy, the statistic guys are doing is they're building a model and going, hmm, does this work? And they'll run a ton of data through there and they'll create a model and it'll be two terabytes in size and they'll take one look at it and go, nope, that doesn't work, they'll throw it away, okay? Um, and then a week later they go, well, you know, maybe, let me look at that again. And they call us up and say, I need to restore that two terabytes. Well, in the past, <laughs> they couldn't do that because we couldn't back it up, right, all right? right? And so all of a sudden, we can back this stuff up. And so it's getting backed up and we're just starting to do these restores. And so they only had a working size of 20, 30 terabytes or something like that. But what we found out was they generate like 10 terabytes a day and they throw it away. And so our backup volume had nothing to do with the size of the volume that we were giving them. It had to do with how much data they generated. So they generated a ton of data. Um, we had to. So expand. they want to back up. They want to back up Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. They even though the sum of that is is five x. You know what's what yeah. is their working amount? Yeah. But they still want it backed up, and yeah. they still may make the call. Well, in the, please bring in it back. In the past, so like, they wouldn't be able to call us, so they would rerun the job. It would take them a day or two and then they'd have their answer. Now, we can expose that old backup job directly to them. It's maybe not high performance because it is secondary storage, but, right, right. but at least they can take a look at it and, and kind of go, yeah, okay, let's, let's bring that back into our primary storage and continue working with it. Um, and and that, that recreation is not so much a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's really like a you know, 10 a.m., noon, <laughs> 2, 4 right, kind right. of thing. Yeah. So has that uh, changed the behavior in, in, in kind of the frequency or it's their work environment where now they feel more comfortable yes. having a lot more yeah. of those so models, a lot more simulations, and ultimately should help their business, right? Yeah, it, well, and they, the, the thing is is that it gives them the ability to quickly you know, play with the model, throw it away, and they can throw it away knowing we can give it back to them quickly, rather than having them to completely regenerate the data. So they they are able to churn through a lot more models. A lot <laughs> how, many, how many weeks do you keep of that stuff? Um, or how many versions? Well, you must, you yeah, must have some limiter. There's a lot you of debate around like that. Zero yeah, there's to a lot infinite, of but uh, yeah, maybe yeah, there's some a lot of debate about that. There's some negotiation around that. I mean, right. w the, w they sort of, we have multiple different working areas, and some of it's like, okay, if you think you might need it, and you want to keep it around for a while, and we actually may use it, then it's, it goes into one storage area right. and we keep that for a lot longer. That's funny, it, it, that's a really um, elegant example of something we talk about all the time in theCUBE, which is you know, at what point in time will the value of the data become a balance sheet asset? Whether that's your core data in your product set or you know, I'm sure there's a whole lot of value in all these models that they're building. And before, data wasn't necessarily considered a, an asset, it was a liability because I had to buy all this stuff to store it and keep it in, like you said, some stuff I couldn't even store. Now people recognize it's a, it's a huge value. It's not necessarily in the balance sheet yet. I think it will be at some point down the road. But this is a terrific example of how you can explode the value by exploding the access, the reuse, the capability without necessarily exploding the budget that you got to take back up to your boss. Yep. Yeah, very much so. And 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 then to be able to drive all these different models, tweak them, customize them, standardize them, target them. Really, that, 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 they must be loving that. They're they're very happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So as you look as you look down the road, like you say, you've been in the business a long time. The data explosions going bananas. You're in a pretty cool, unique little marketplace. What are some of your priorities? What's next for for you? Um, well, okay. So this is nothing to do with um, what we've been talking about, but. Um, 
a month ago, I turned my laptop into my desktop support team. And I now run everything off my phone. You turned, um, oh, you turned your, your physical laptop. My you physical, it over. that thing, I don't carry that thing. That's too big, baby. <laughs> um, so um, we, uh, we have a VDI implementation. And I have a Samsung phone that has a dock. So I dock it, and I have my monitor, and I go in to do VDI. Um, and, but I don't have a laptop anymore. I can do everything I can do from my phone. And so I think that is like how to, to make that something that the business users can do rather than just us techie guys who like want to push the boundary and push the envelope. Um, I think that's, that really is the future. You know, the whole idea of mobile first, it's kind of like mobile only. Right. You know, we, we really shouldn't be doing mobile first, it's mobile only, and how can you make it work? And I like your style, you're just extreme. Like you say, you just turn off the old light switch. If you're going to make the move, make the move. Yeah. Just rip the Band-Aid off and, and get on with it. Yeah, <laughs> they've got the laptop. I told them to redeploy it. It's a nice laptop, give it to somebody else. If there's something I can't do, I'll go get one of the loaners. Don't say that too loud. Hours, Chuck, yeah. Chuck's looking for a few laptops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stephen. Well, thank you for, for coming by and sharing the story. I'm going to dig more into, into the company. I didn't know that whole kind of backside in terms of the investor um, awesome. opportunity. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. And again, thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by. All right, thanks for having me. All righty, Stephen, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE from the Palo Alto Studios, CUBE Conversation. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.